You may have seen the news this week. Our dear NASCAR Racing 2003 is 20 years old. 20 years of this awesome sim. And despite the sometimes present cynical voice in my head, wishing we've gotten something new in those last 20 years, I can't help but be thankful and nostalgic and I guess happy overall that we did get what we got when we got it. I've talked about it before, but I'm so happy this sim came out in 2003. It was right at the end of what I think of as the classic version of NASCAR. No playoffs, no stages. It was more or less the most evolved version of the sport in its original format, or at least what it had been like since the mid 70s. And the sport was far from perfect then. If you go back and watch races, read news write-ups and things, there was tons of criticism to NASCAR for boring races or the fact that Matt Kenseth won a championship that year with a single win. But those long, sometimes processional moments were punctuated by just sheer excitement. And when two cars were coming to battle to the finish of a race, it really meant a lot because it was organic and it was just happening for purely competitive reasons. So again, I'm really happy that this sim came out when it did because it captures this era really well. So it wasn't in my plans to make some kind of celebration for this 20th year milestone. In fact, I'm actually a couple days late at the time that I'm recording this, but the bug has bit me as it so often does every few months and I find myself racing in NASCAR 2003 instead of practicing for rally or all the other things that I like to do. And this time I've discovered a couple really interesting things that I wanted to share and talk about as I do a little race. So since it is the 75th anniversary of NASCAR this year and we're celebrating 20 years of this great sim, why don't we go back and relive a little bit of that high time that was the 50th NASCAR anniversary, 1998, mostly as an excuse to take out the amazing 1998 mod, but I've got lined up a full grid from the 1998 Bush Grand National season. And I'm at Phoenix International Raceway, an awesome backdated version of the circuit based on the 97 version and not a track that was on the Bush Grand National calendar. So something a little fictional, but it's an awesome track and an awesome set of cars and will prevent me from repeating myself if I ever actually do a full season in this sim on this channel. So strap in for 50 laps as we go for a nostalgic ride. Drivers, start your engines. All right, so we'll wait to roll away from the pits here at Phoenix with the 1998 Bush cars. Like I said, Bush didn't race here in 1998. I think they started one year later, but it's such an awesome version of the circuit and I love this track a lot. Thunder 98 does an amazing job backdating, retrofitting, building all custom circuits that fit this time frame with all the correct logos and everything. It really puts you in that time period. Those little details are so important. And so for a 50 lap race, should be the perfect track for it. I have it on two times fuel burn and tire wear. So we should have to pit at some point, as long as there's not a lot of caution, but maybe we'll pit under caution as well, not sure. I try to work my way up from the back of the pack. I've got the AI set really strong, so it might be hard to get our way up there, but it should be fun either way. We'll wait for him now. Green flag, green flag. Green, green, green. All right, punch it. Everybody's quite slow here. Just try to bide my time coming into the first corner. Let everybody sort it out. Get the bottom lane here under the 80, behind the 80 car. My knowledge of back markers in the Bush series from 1998 is quite lacking. So hopefully we get up to some of the quicker cars that I do know. I'm sure some folks in the comments will know all of the different drivers. It was an exciting time in the sport as we'll come around to complete the first lap here. Just kind of waiting behind the 80. Don't want to do anything too crazy here. Outside. All clear. Outside. Still outside. The kink on the back straightaway Still at Phoenix, outside. the Still old there. Phoenix like it is here, was one of the exciting spots on the track, especially with the grass on the inside. There were some pretty wild accidents there over the years. But it's a tough track to race. Flat tracks like this, or it's not really that flat, but it's much flatter than 
some of the other NASCAR circuits and uh, requires a little bit more finesse. Tires tend to wear out. Feels like my car is actually a little under series. I'll shoot to the high side here. Really wide through turns three and four. But it doesn't feel that way with 42, 43 stock cars on it. I think we've got 42 here. 78 is coming back low. I'm fighting for last place and loving every second of it. How awesome is it to have a full field of stock cars racing on an oval AI that behaves well? It felt like this was just the beginning in 2003, but I think as we've seen over the years, there's not been much that has uh, done any better. Especially if you want to do something like this. iRacing has great AIs. We'll sneak up behind Blaze Alexander. I do know that one in the 20. Three wide in front, though. Going to block the way. 78 slips down low. All right. We got to get around some of the really slow cars here. Should string out a bit and get a little bit easier, though, as everybody gets single file. Paint the yellow line across the bottom of the circuit. All right, get on the throttle. There we go. Car is pushing quite a lot. It's going to be tough to tough to battle. Maybe adjust it in the pit stop if I can. If I can make it that far. All right, there we go. Don't want to get up on that curb too much. Still side by side with Alexander. We should be able to get him through three and four now. Love it, go under the Goodyear Eagle Bridge. So iconic. Such a shame they removed that. Just something about the desert scene with the red and white Winston walls. The big Goodyear Bridge. The mountain Rattlesnake Ridge down the back straightaway here. It's a really interesting looking track. Very unique. If it wasn't really, you maybe would think it's a fantasy circuit. Phoenix was a special place. Still... A lovely vista, but a little bit different in these days. All right, there we go. Work my way under these cars. See if I can get the 78 here. Oh, he checks out wide. Just tagged the rear end there. Dive into turn one. Quite easy to outbreak yourself in these cars. I'll slide the tires just a little bit there. I'm running the Petty V8 sound set that I run pretty much in all my videos I think I've done, at least in the last couple of years of NASCAR 2003. Highly recommended. It's an excellent sound pack. It's maybe not the most fitting for every type of car, but it sounds so much better, in my opinion, than most other sound sets out there that it's, it's enough to convince me. And that's what it's all about for me. It's the immersion of it. I don't necessarily need it to be the perfect simulation of a certain year of car or anything like that. It's the 2003 stock cars, but everything else about it just makes it so immersive that always having fun just watch my rear view there to the right can barely see out the rear of these cars I'm driving a 98 Ford Taurus which was a controversial car when it appeared still is these days I think folks are divided on it quite a bit not the best looking car maybe far from it but an interesting looking car and I think it's so specific Whoa, as they check up in front the 14 this Patty Moyes if I'm not mistaken so iconic of this time period, the Ford Taurus coming into NASCAR. It was very divisive. It was so much faster than everything else. The Bush series here didn't really have many. It was almost entirely Chevrolets, as we can see in front of me. I think well, there's another Ford right to the right, but most of the other cars are Chevrolets. There's a few Pontiacs, but mostly Chevys. And then a couple Fords lock up the left front there just a little bit. And then some of the Fords were Thunderbirds for quite a long time before everybody got into the Tauruses. Just hit the apron of the circuit there. All right, so up to 39th, not made too much progress yet. Already 12 laps into it. Should try to make it to at least lap 25 and kind of want to stretch it as far as I can or until the other cars start pitting so that if a caution does come out, go a lap down or anything like that. I might just go a lap down on pace here. We'll see. Bit of a 
run here down the end of the back straightaway, dive up the inside into turn three. Side by side, we should be able to get it in turns one and two. We'll be able to dive on the 56 as well. We're a bit adventurous on the brakes. Just trying not to understeer up into him. There we go, he's going to cut in front through the kink. I've been watching the 98 NASCAR season recently. I don't know why I got on that kick, because usually I'm watching some of the older seasons than that. I tend to have rewatched 92 a few times. For those that don't know somehow, pretty much all of it's on YouTube. In varying quality, some of it's posted by the NASCAR official channel and it's very, very nice quality to watch. Others are just ripped from old VHSs and things, but kind of adds a charm to it. And uh, I've been watching the full 98 season and I'm only a few races in rounds in. I think I'm on the Bush series at Darlington at this point, but it's excellent background noise and a tune in once in a while. And I feel like NASCAR in that era was perfect for that. You didn't, or I'm sure some people did, but I never intently watched every single race as you are kind of meant to do these days. Just going to keep it on, listen for the updates. Whoa, it's one of those constants. Slip up the outside of the 47 here. See if I can get him around the high side. It's tricky. It's tough to do. He's going to have a lot of speed here on the low side. Nice run on the 56. Nowhere to go with it, though. Oh, the 14's going to slip down back low. I'm going to fall down the order. So I'm not too careful here. Try to carry this speed on the back straightaway. Well, the 47 checks up quite a lot there. Alright, dive back in. Fighting as one of the back markers. I, I did paint my car up as a sponsorless white Ford Taurus, so I guess we're one of these new teams that seems so frequent in this era. Seems like everybody and their brother was starting a NASCAR team, and some of these races had 60 plus cars in every series show up for them. I know, watch the truck opener from the Walt Disney Speedway. Walt Disney World Speedway. What a name. But I think that had like 70 something trucks in only the third or fourth year of the truck series. And uh, they had a Concy race, which I don't think ever really happened in any of the major NASCAR series for quite a long time. They used to do like a B feature at Daytona, believe it or not. But it had been many years, I believe, since that had taken place. This was sneak around the outside there. Shane Hall in front, I believe, in this 85. What was the car is going to go down low? I almost slipped to that low lane. Easy way to spin yourself out there. All right, carry the speed on the high side. Things starting to string out just a tad. It's going to make it a bit easier, hopefully, to make some progress. And we'll see how my tires wear against the AI. If I can uh, make up a few more spots, hopefully. Look at the full back marker experience, though. But so many cars would show up to qualify. In 1998, it just felt like a very exciting time in NASCAR. So, like I said, I usually watch a little more nostalgic for maybe five or so years before then. But it's been a lot of fun watching the 98 season. I forgot just how exciting it was. And the racing was so good. It was so, so good. These very long green flag races, especially in the Cup Series. The Bush Series was almost like ARCA is these days. A lot of wrecks, there's some crazy accidents in the first few rounds at least of the Bush series for 98, but also exciting to watch some great names that you know. Dale Earnhardt Jr. of course coming to prominence. Matt Kenseth getting his first win. Tony Stewart making his first starts. It's, it's a great year to jump in if you're looking for a, a year to start watching NASCAR. Some of the old archives. Broadcast coverage is amazing. It's, it's straight to the point. It, you're there to watch a race. There's nothing else going on during it. So it's, it might be boring for some, but I absolutely love it. It's what I grew up you know, really watching is that era. And uh, I can see why I got hooked on it, because it's still so much fun to, to go back and look at. Shane 
hall here, sitting halfway up the track. I'm keeping my eye on the mirror there. I got the 47 looking a little bit low on me. It's a sport of inches. There we go. Dive it up the inside. He's going to give me the space. Sometimes it's easy to psych out the AI. They're so good. They've got little quirks here and there, and I think we all know them for anybody that plays this sim quite a bit. You know how the AI react to certain scenarios or where you can maybe take advantage over them, but when you look at it at the end of the day, I, I always have an entertaining time in the sim, no matter if I'm racing for 35th year like we are or I'm going for a win. Quite often it's more fun to race in the back here, so I'm kind of glad it's happening. We followed this 80 car quite a ways up, and I think a couple cars up the road, that orange car is Dick Trickle. A lot of cup drivers raced in the Bush series. Very famously, Mark Martin won a ton of Bush races in the 90s. He's probably right out front. I'm sure we'll see him at some point lapping me. All right, we're halfway though. Man, won't buy quick. A little bit low in the entry there. It's going to scoop me out wide. hot into turn three. Don't want to slide the tires much and the sound set, like I said, sounds great. Gives you a great indication. The tires, they do sound realistic, but they're this very high pitched screeching noise that uh, very different from the default sound, but it'll definitely let you know if you're sliding them at all. Just hear the faintest sound of them as I come into turn three there. Stalling out a bit, very, a lot of push in the car. I gotta try to back up my entry. I think I'm really trying to dive it into the corner. Let's do it again here. Turns one and two don't seem so bad. It's turns three and four that are not great. So we might need to make a track bar adjustment. The exit mostly, so I'll raise the track bar. We'll see my uh, setup knowledge here, but I'll raise it quite a bit and see if that makes a noticeable difference in the handling as we'll pit. Hopefully in a few laps here. Yeah, thank you, Chad. It's the Jimmy Johnson spotter pack, which I think is the best one. They still make it. The group that put it out, DW, what is it, DW Warehouse. I'll put a link in the description of the video. But they make an iRacing version now, which uses a lot of the same sound files. But that increases the immersion of the sim a ton. You just gotta love all of the years of mods. 20 years of mods and add-ons, and there's a lot out there. I could imagine seeing NASCAR 2003 for the first time and then installing the base game and trying to figure out what you're doing. So I'm happy that I have had this game for 20 years to fool around with, but it's not hard to get racing like this as the 80 gets slowed up there by the 77. It's gonna be tough to come around the high side right now. A little bit of space out back so I can afford to try to make a few moves. There we go. A little bit of a run down the front straightaway. Tucking right behind him. And I dip up the inside. Oh, right at the limit of braking there. There we go. Side by side on the back straightaway, but should have him. There's really nothing straight about it here. Seven parks it in front. It's where you might go into the pits. We should start seeing pit stops soon, and I'm going to be the very first stall on pit road. I've had a foray as well. If you follow me on Twitter, you would have seen, but I've just been playing all the old Papyrus Sims and quite a bit of NASCAR 2 and NASCAR 99. And it's been fun as well to look at those, do some racing in those, and then come to this and just what an improvement in such a short time span. I love those older sims and there's a lot of charm and unique things that they can do. And they're still quite good. It's the 80's gonna look down low here. Three wide up in front, that'll help me catch them a little bit. It's Bobby Hillen on the outside, I believe. But the older Papyrus sims, still a lot of enjoyment in those. A few features too that I would love to have had in NASCAR 2003, like race saving and things, but the improvement was real. 
in every edition there was a lot of changes especially the leap from NASCAR 3 to 4 then it was refined into 2002 and then here finally 2003 you have to wish they did another one I suppose it is iRacing it's kind of where it went but it's not the same it's not the same thing and that's why we're still here All right, I'm getting close to the bitter end here have to risk it and pit and then hope it all works out through the cycle. I think I'm quite low on fuel. I'll be about three laps short on fuel. <laughs> it's so close. Maybe not want to change four tires actually. The fronts are wearing out quite a bit but we might just change right sides. Save some time. Nobody's able to save quite that long to make it to the end without pitting. But maybe I'll pit and try to get a couple extra laps on new tires. It only will work if it stays green, so it's such a gamble. But it's the strategy decisions. I love doing longer races in this sim, and it's what makes it hard to do videos or a stream. I think I've got the leader coming up behind me now. So we might as well pit. I'm about to go a lap down and we can see what happens. So we'll try to make the dive to pit lane this time and hopefully it all works out for me, but I guess we'll see it either way. Get it to the third gear. Get it on the apron so hard here. All right, there we go. First gear, slide it into the box. Put a little flash of fuel in it. Wait for them to change the tires and then go and not speed. Go, 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 Try to get it out of the pits without spinning. Get out there, get out there. Go, go, go. There's the dick trickle coming by. I think I'm clear, but he didn't clear me. Very useful spotter. All right, so I should actually have quite the edge over everybody, and this is where I'm gonna make up time, and I just have to cross my fingers that they're gonna pit. Because if they all saved three laps of fuel, Nothing, nothing I could do could help with that. But you can see how much I gained on trickle there through one and two. Just get to the low side. I might have the edge now to get around the high side Nailed here. There, there we go. Oh, and I do see a car pitting. I'm so happy. <laughs> My mind is going to have to redo the video if I praise the AI in NASCAR 2003 so much and then... They do something silly like go way longer than me on a stint. It all works out. Alright, so they're all going to jump in the pits over the next few laps and just hope we get through the whole cycle. Pit stop time, as it was in real life, is high time for accidents and cautions and things with people entering and exiting the track and it's just a really easy place to crash for lack of a better word so just like in real life nascar 2003 more cautions happen during the pit cycles than outside of them so we just have to hope we make it through the whole thing so slide into turn three there a little bit too fast but i caught it and i am using so these are the 2003 spec Bush series cars, but if you're very in tune with the sim, you may have noticed it's behaving slightly differently, and it's because I am using an updated set of physics for them, which is made by the NRE group, and uh, I cannot recommend them enough. You know physics things with 2003 is I'll slip out the outside of Joe Bessie, and I think I'm making a lot of progress here, because I'm pretty sure he was ahead of me before. Come 
off the inside. We'll look for the position up to 30th oh, now. So this is all working out for me through the pit stops. Maybe taking two tires was the key. We'll see if I can hold them off behind as we come to the finish. We'll pass a few more cars here. I think we got Tony Stewart up front in the Shell 44 for Joe Gibbs. Rookie stripes, Tony Stewart. I'm still racing IRL at the same time as he did Bush Series in 1998. All right, up the inside though. Buckshot Jones in the double zero. Love that paint scheme. Seven laps to go. It's all working out well. But like I said, physics changes for NASCAR 2003. Not only is it a bit taboo because of everything that's happened in the past, but there's a lot of stuff out there that's all guesswork. I'm not sure anybody really knows exactly how this all works with changing physics and things like that. So I'm always weary of trying them, but this is some awesome stuff. And uh, it fixes the biggest issue, one of the biggest issues I've always had with the physics in NASCAR 2003, which is spinning the car if you get a little too sideways. You can actually catch slides with it, but it doesn't feel unrealistic as, oh, a big lock up there, buckshot, brake check me coming into three. I'll hold on to it, but sideways a bit, just proving my point. Here we go, hold off Tony Stewart though. Oh, big moment. Five more laps so we can make it through here. It's always been really hard to catch slides. It's kind of the eye racing problem. Once you get the car a bit sideways, it's going to go around no matter what. And uh, whatever they changed in this, they didn't really change the characteristics of the cars so much. It still behaves, as far as I can tell, I've, I've done limited racing with it at this point, but it still behaves like a... 2003 era stock car, but it just feels a bit nicer. And uh, I've tried both the trucks and the Bush cars here, and uh, I heard cups somewhat the same way. So NASCAR Racing Experiments or Extremes NRE, their 2003 update is very nice. But even the stock sim is quite good, and up until very recently, I always had used the stock sim. An absolute oldie but a goldie, as we say. All right, we gotta see if I can get around Buckshot here in the final few laps, but he's quite quick. Up to 21st, though, the pit stops really worked out for me. It'd be fun to do this. I have fun doing this over a full race, like 200 laps. I don't know how entertaining that would be, but I suppose if you're still here right now, you're entertained by this, this type of thing anyway. But doing the kind of pit stop strategy and long green flag runs, I'm just as happy if there's no yellow flags as it looks like we're going to get here today. As if there there were a ton of them. Kind of preferred the long green flag runs. Very, very NASCAR of the time period. We'll come around and we'll grab the white flag this time. And I'll have one more lap here as Buckshot looks towards the high side, then the inside. Where's he going? A lot of understeer coming out of the corner. White flag, one more. One more time, buddy. One more time. Oh, he's going to look to the high side, open up the bottom lane, sneak in there. Come on, get on the throttle. A lot of the car just bogs down quite a bit there. We got a nicer, much better launch out of the corner than I did. Come down to turns three and four, though. Once again, he's looking all over the track. Ah, oh, through the final corner. Not going to be able to get him, though. But come to the line. Ah, fun little race, that. At least some close racing, even though I didn't get the pass. And finishing 21st, not exactly the uh, big win. But NASCAR 2003, it's it's a great sim, and I can't imagine I'm going to stop playing it anytime soon. And so I guess here's to, here's to another 20 years. I hope we get something new, but it's not because I don't enjoy you. And uh, I'll be just as happy 20 years from now, I think as I am right now. But thank you for watching. This is GP Laps, and I'll see you all again next time.